Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to the November 6th uh, meeting of the Sammamish City Council. Uh, this is uh, obviously a uh, very important evening for us. We have uh, not only the council meeting, but this is also election night. And uh, because of that, we're going to try to expedite this evening a little bit so we can all get home and uh, pay attention to what's going on uh, nationally and uh, locally as well. For those that have not yet voted, and there may be some out there watching on TV, I uh, want to remind you that there are drop boxes for your ballots at the Issaquah and uh, Redmond City Halls. So if you drive by, there's a place to put your ballot, uh, even if you can't find a post office that's willing to take it. The Issaquah City, uh, pardon me, the Issaquah Post Office will be open until 10 o'clock, pardon me, the Bellevue Post Office will be open until 10 o'clock tonight if you wish to drive by and drop off a ballot. Again, that's the Bellevue City Hall. Uh, you can also download a ballot at uh, kingcountyeveryonecounts.com, fill it out, and then uh, take it in if you don't have a ballot. I don't have the details on that, so I'm not going to try to go there. Uh, now, uh, I'm going to ask uh, the city clerk to do the roll call. Mayor Tom O'Dell. Here. Deputy Mayor John James. Here. Deputy Mayor John Taylor. I mean, Council Member John Curley. <laughs> Council Member Don Jaron. Present. Council Member Romero Valderrama. Present. Member Tom Benn? Here. Council Member Nancy Whitman. Eastside Catholic High School student liaison, Chad Brown? Here. Skyline student liaison, Kyle, Kyle Weatherby? Here. And Sydney Hickman? Here. Thank you. Mr. <coughs> Mayor, I'd like to make, go ahead, make a motion to excuse Council Member do we have a report on the whereabouts of John Curley? Yes, we do. He's, he's sick. He's sick. I think that's a the reason for excuse, too. So. Mm -hmm. Second. <laughs> okay, so uh, well, it's been moved to excuse uh, Council Member Witten for uh, personal reasons and uh, Council Member uh, Curley due to illness. Uh, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. By our vote of five to zero, the motion carries. Thank you. I'm going to ask uh, our Deputy Mayor to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Um, may we have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. Second. We moved and second to approve the agenda. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. By our vote of 5 0, the agenda is nope. approved. Uh, yes. We had a uh, request by our city manager to um, delete the regular meeting on December 17th as a practice of this council. Um, I didn't have a chance to put my hand in to say that we'd like to make a suggestion. I don't know if that's this is the time or the place. <coughs> it's really not, but uh, let's bring it up onto your uh, new business. Okay. If that's acceptable to everybody. You want to just make the quick motion to do it now, Mr. Mayor? Before we forget? Yeah, let's get it done since you started the topic. Okay, I'd like to make a motion to um, cancel the regular meeting on December 17th. Second. Been moved and seconded to cancel the September me excuse December. me December seventeenth <laughs> meeting of the Sammamish City Council. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. By a vote of five zero, we are canceling the December seventeenth meeting. Thank you. Okay. Uh, now we have student liaison reports. I'm going to let's see. Start with Skyline and move down the hill to East Lake. All right, well, um, currently nothing huge or super eventful is happening, but we would like to talk about our Winter Wonder Week at Skyline. We have, it's the week before we go on break. 
which is, do you know those dates? Uh, beginning of December. Yeah, beginning of December. Um, Kyle and I, we hold a position as we are also in charge of the blood drive, so we'll be having a blood drive at Skyline. The dates are of that week. Do you know what, is it, is it the 4th? Uh, I believe so. I believe it's the 4th, but that's still to be determined, but it is that week. And so if you guys want to donate blood, you can stop by Skyline. Yeah, anything else? Um, the the Winter Wonder Week is uh, it's like a spirit week for us at school. It's uh, it includes a lots of pro a lot of projects that uh, ourselves and our ASB class do together, um, like charity uh, fundraisers and all that sorts of stuff. Um, lots of good things going on um, to support those less fortunate in the holiday season. Um, really a fun time for us, and um, just really looking forward to that. Doing a lot of planning. Um, Last time we were here, I believe homecoming was coming up, and uh, that was a rousing success. Um, Very well. Uh, lots of fun, and so that's what's uh, that's what's going on mainly. Yeah. Very good. <coughs> Chad, do you want to go next? Yeah. Uh, hi guys, I'm Chad. I'm from Eastside Catholic, and uh, right now there isn't a whole lot going on. Mostly there's just a lot of sports uh, information right now. Our football team they won the Metro title, so they won like their league. And now they are in the playoffs in the second round now, and they're going to be playing Kelso at Seattle Memorial Stadium on Saturday. Then our volleyball team has also made it to the playoffs, and I know they're doing really well. Um, besides that, we had our homecoming in early October, and that was also a great success. I know we got a lot of revenue from that, so I'm really excited about that. And we also have a uh, junior and senior retreat called Destiny coming up in the end of November. And besides that, there's not a whole lot going on. How long is the retreat? It is, it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, so about three days. Is it held at the school or do you go somewhere? No, we go to, um, uh, I can't remember what it's called, but it's out um, west. Um, I can't remember what it is. It's some okay. fort retreat out there. But well, it's a good time. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Okay, great. Is that it? Yeah. Okay. I think so. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you, all three of you, very much for coming this evening. We do appreciate hearing from you. Uh, it's always good to uh, get some local input from uh, the high schools, particularly for those of us who no longer have kids uh, that attended. Uh, mine are long gone. Uh, but uh, at, we're, you guys are an important part of our community. We really do appreciate hearing what's going on there. So, yeah. so again, thank you very much. You get some uh, if, uh, if you'd like to stay and uh, listen to what's going on, fine. Otherwise, you're free to uh, to go home and watch the returns or do homework or whatever you'd like to do. Keep up on that election. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. Get a hot lead on something. Send us a uh, text. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Good night. Good night. On our agenda for this evening, we ha under uh, presentations and proclamations, we had a night until the John Curley Award winners. However, uh, in light of Council Member Curley's absence, we will postpone this to a future date uh, to be uh, to be announced. Uh, so I'm going to move on to public comment. This is a uh, opportunity for the public to address the council. Our uh, procedure is to allow three minutes uh, for each individual who wishes to address the council or five minutes if you're representing the official position of a recognized community organization. So I have uh, four names that have been given to me, actually five, and I will call them and then at the end of it I will ask if uh, there are others who wish to address the council. At that point you can raise your hand and I will call upon you. So first I have uh, Kathy Anderson and Caroline Brown. get to test this. Sure. <laughs> Good evening and thank you very much for um, allowing us a few minutes to talk with you. My name is Kathy Anderson. This is Caroline Brown. We are with the Sammy Awards Foundation. We sit on the board of directors and we wanted to take a couple minutes to update you on some exciting changes that are taking place with the Sammy Awards Foundation. In line with our mission of celebrating and promoting community involvement, we're moving from a competition-based event to a recognition event. To accomplish this goal, 
We are increasing community participation with a simplified nomination process and an event that will celebrate and recognize all of those who are nominated to be a SAMI. We've identified that a SAMI has a valuable impact on our community. These individuals volunteer their time and talents while inspiring others to do likewise. You may nominate a SAMI at www.samiawards.org in one of the following five revised categories. The first award is the Circle of Service. This is a person who displays through years of service a long-standing commitment to volunteerism and community involvement, inspiring others to give back, therefore completing the circle of service. The second group is community spirit. A person 18 years or older who displays the highest level of volunteer commitment to the community by selflessly giving of their time and talents. The third category is courage. A person who overcomes obstacles, goes beyond expectations, and displays acts of selflessness in their service to others in our community. Environmental stewardship. A person who volunteers their resources and or time advocating or working to protect our natural environment. And finally, I wish they hadn't left, youth spirit. A youth 17 years or younger who shows a passion for helping others, volunteering in our community and setting a positive example. Additionally, we are inviting community groups to use this event venue to recognize any of their participants for outstanding service to the community. This will include organizations such as Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, Rotary, Kiwanis, Boys and Girls Club, the PTSA Golden Acorn recipients, etc. So it's pretty much wide open. We'll encourage these organizations to also nominate those individuals to become a SAMI, which will give them an additional recognition for the great work they are doing in this community. We believe these changes will provide the SAMI Awards Foundation a sustainable future as well as a continued vehicle for recognizing the individuals in our community who display the highest level of commitment to volunteerism and community involvement which can only positively reflect on Sammamish as a whole. Over the last decade, we have been witness to heartwarming and at times heartbreaking inspirational stories of service, courage, and most of all, hope. None of this would be possible without the hard work of volunteer committees and with the generous sponsorship by individuals, businesses, and community partners. We particularly are appreciative of the support the city of Sammamish has extended to us over the years. It's simple. Without your support, we would not exist. So thank you for your foresight and commitment in seeing the value that the Sammy Awards Foundation brings to this community. So do you know a Sammy? <laughs> if you do, please go to our website and nominate them. It takes five minutes of your time to recognize one more volunteer who makes a difference in our community. That deadline is December 1st. A celebration of our community's Sammies and their stories will be shared at the free all-community event on March 15, 2013 at 6 p.m. at Eastridge Church. So mark your calendars, and we expect to see you all there. On behalf of the Board of Directors, we would like to thank all of those who have volunteered and have provided ongoing feedback on the relevance of the organization in improving its structure and process. The Foundation is honored and excited to return to its roots of storytelling as Sammamish acknowledges magnificent moments of inspiration. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Get a bag. So you put this on. You think about somebody who makes your life happier, we want to be like better, there, and have Thank you. Okay. enjoys, <laughs> makes Sammamish Thank a you, nice Kelly. place to be, a fabulous community to share. Thank you. You won't get it on the floor. You'll see Mr. Mayor. You just cannot stop, Caroline. <laughs> yes, Council Member Jared. I left Wisconsin a half century ago, but I didn't know the accent changed that much in the last half century. <laughs> <laughs> it's Madison. You might be at the bubble at any time. So y'all hate there because I'm from Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I expected. 
In the uh, interest of full disclosure, I should probably let the audience know that the mayor is also a member of the Savvy Board of Directors, and uh, I too encourage uh, everyone to put on the thinking caps and uh, go back over the last several months and think of people you've met or know or witnessed doing uh, things that deserve to be mentioned to the community. I personally have about half a dozen people that I'm going to plug into the computer in the next week and uh, also need to emphasize too this is for all ages it's not necessarily for youth or for elders it's uh, open to anyone who's done something <coughs> worthy of recognition so thank you very much for coming thank you, thank you. okay <coughs> next on the list I have uh, Michael Schneider and uh, I didn't say it before but uh, we ask that you give us uh, your full name and address Mr. Mayor, members of the council, guests, my name is Michael Schneider. I live at 22130 Northeast 13th Place in Sammamish. I'm a member of the board of directors of Imagine Housing, we used to be called St. Andrew's Housing Group. And I'm here tonight to talk with you about ARCH and your continued participation with us in helping fund affordable communities in our, in our area. Affordable housing addresses critical needs in our east side communities. There's not enough housing options for people among the full range of incomes on the east side, where average rents in East King County for two bedrooms is over $1,200 and up to almost $1,800 average in some areas like West Bellevue. Single parents have to earn 2.7 times the minimum wage to afford the average in East King County. Based on average rent, 60,000, more than 60,000 families in East King County can't afford to live here. 34% of families in East King County are paying more than 30% of their incomes for rent, which means they are cost burdened and have to go without other basic necessities like food, clothing, transportation, child care, and health care. People we depend on to teach our children and protect our communities and provide valuable services to us can't afford to live here unless, we, unless they have access to affordable housing. Funding a regional coalition for housing, or ARCH as it's known, the Housing Trust Fund meets the city's Growth Management Act requirements. The Arch Trust Fund ensures that participating east side cities receive credit toward their Growth Management Act requirements. Sammamish's contribution towards the Arch Housing Trust is leveraged with contributions from other cities to create affordable housing in east side cities, which Sammamish and other participating cities then get credit for. The investment in affordable housing is a solid investment that cares for our citizens. It's highly leveraged, generates jobs, stimulates the economy, and has a proven track record for success. Affordable housing gives a struggling individual and families a hand up so that they can stabilize their lives and get an education and a better job and have a future. Now imagine housing, of which I'm a participant, it, we've been building affordable housing on the east side for about 25 years. And with, some, with the financial support from east side cities, Imagine Housing has built 427 apartments for working families, low income seniors, veterans, and other homeless individuals on 12 properties in five cities on the east side. In 2011, we opened up Andrews Glen in Factoria and Francis Village in Kirkland providing 100 new residences with wraparound supportive services. 75 of the apartments are dedicated to individuals and families transitioning from homelessness, 30 of which are designated specifically for homeless veterans. East Side City's funding through ARCH was leveraged 13 times for Andrews Glen and 14 times for Francis Village by county, state, and federal resources stretching every dollar on all of these projects. We're getting ready for our next project in South Kirkland, a park and ride project 
where there will be 184 market rate apartments, 58 affordable apartments, 7,000 square feet of retail to create a community that's livable and has easy access to transportation. Leadership and funding from Eastside Cities and Arch are making a project like this possible. So on behalf of Imagine Housing and the over 1,000 individual, individuals that we serve and that rely upon this affordable housing, I'd like to urge you to fund affordable housing development through ARCH in 2013. Thanks very much. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Schneider. Uh, Arthur Golan. Four four one zero two hundred thirty first place southeast nine eight zero seven five. Thank you for the opportunity to speak here tonight. I have talked to over two hundred residents of Sammamish about the community center, and no matter what the outcome of today's advisory vote, and let me stress this again, no matter what the outcome of today's advisory vote, the initial reaction I received from citizens was the concept of a community center was generally accepted as a good idea. Additionally, the idea of helping charity was also well received. However, when I explained to residents that the project, one, was never put out to bid, two, had it been put out to bid, there was a reasonable chance that a local business would be willing to build a 45,000 square foot facility with their own money, not the city's money, if the city would just put in the infrastructure like roads and parking. This would save the city millions of dollars that could be redirected into needed infrastructure uxure, or other needs and wants like safety, roads, stormwater systems, and even ball fields. Three, that the facility as currently planned will compete with and could put out of business an existing Sammamish family business that is one of the city's largest employers and has served the residents of Sammamish for over a decade. Four, that the residents' idea of no new taxes is different than the city's idea of no new taxes. Five, that the project will use a majority of the city's reserves. And six, that the community center as currently planned does not include an outdoor pool or banquet facilities. When residents had more of the facts, a significant majority, and this may sound hard to believe, but over 90% opposed the community center as planned. I wish I could have talked to thousands of people, not 200. I sincerely believe the city, the city should explore the concept of a community center. However, this should be done in the open, with input from the community, with numerous options explored, and then put out to bid. The current process of a misleading survey Holding back information from the public and behind door negotiations only creates mistrust and conflict within our community. I don't know if you realize, but this is really dividing the community. It is time for the city to do what the citizens really want. But for that to be done, the residents of Sammamish will have to be educated on the alternatives and then be provided the opportunity to select. Trying to cram down a single option with no bidding process, without explaining all the facts or alternatives, is just wrong. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gowen. Can I ask a question to the city manager, Mr. Mayor? Go ahead, Council Mayor. Uh, city manager, we continually heard that there's a proposal by a developer that had been made to build the facility that's being discussed without any assistance of the city, except now, as Mr. Goldman says, roads or infrastructure. The only proposal I've seen asked the city to build the building. Is that correct? That's correct. Whatever I got, I already forwarded on to all council members. Okay, so I don't know why we continue to hear uh, the story. Uh, I think it's misleading and disingenuous. If the city... Uh, we've seen the letter and it's publicly available for people to see on that side. Uh, so I am concerned when it's, we're accused, the city that is, accused of misleading and this is continually being put forward. Uh, I would suggest, and I have asked in the past our attorney to check on the factual uh, points of both sides, uh, the pros and the cons. 
given the facts that have been continually been repeated here, I think as a council it would behoove us that next time we appoint any group, whether pros or cons, in any position, recognizing that they are partisan to their side, that they should make sure that the information is accurate, that they're providing, and factual. As I check each of the different sites, uh, Mr. Zwaznik's uh, VoteNo.net, Sammamish Commons, uh, Common Sense, they seem to all have these type of errors. And I would suggest that just as we ask the Planning Commission, the Parks Commission, to sign non-compete or recluse themselves if there are issues that they should be able to also address and make sure that information is timely and accurate on their sites and information they propose if they're going to be appointed to one of our committees. Okay, thank you. Jim Osgood. Jim Osgood, 19661 Southeast 24th Way, and I am not here to talk about the community center. Um, well, I'm here, what I'm here to do, though, is to encourage you to add a larger funding to the budget for upgrading Sammamish's inadequate stormwater systems. I'm concerned that the city has placed the stormwater system upgrades on a slow track. I believe that they should be on the forefront, not six to ten years out into the future. In my involvement with the Planning Commission process to update the ECA, I have found that most everyone agrees that there is a lack of adequate stormwater systems to protect the lake. I encourage you to make sure that you have included enough money in the upcoming budget to implement or at least start to implement all three stormwater systems under study sooner rather than later. Thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> that ends the, uh, the list of sign-ups. Is there anyone who has not spoken who wishes to speak? Not seeing anyone, I'm going to close public comment. <coughs> so at this point, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Um, may I have a motion for approval of the consent agenda? I so move. Second. Second. Been moved and second to approve the consent agenda. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. By our vote of 5 0, the consent agenda is approved. Thank you. Okay, moving on to public hearings. Uh, we have uh, an ordinance. Uh, it's the second reading vacating the easternmost eight feet of 225th uh, Avenue Southeast. Uh, 225th Avenue Southeast, south of Southeast 32nd Street, adjacent to tax parcel number 0924069201. Uh, okay. Uh, we do we have a staff report on this? Mr. Mayor, we had given an extensive staff report at last meeting for the second time tonight. Um, and I don't know that we need to repeat what we already presented to council. Um, if you have any questions, we'd be happy to answer the questions. If you'd like to see the entire presentations, we'll be happy to do that also. Let's pass. <laughs> <laughs> no question. No offense to Laura, my public oh, works director. Then taken. I would just add that the the public hearing was held open, so that the mm -hmm. action tonight would be to continue the public hearing, and then um, our recommendation is that the council then approve, close the public hearing, and then approve the ordinance that's in the packet. Mm. And that is correct. Uh, so let's. Uh, I will reopen the public hearing, uh, but before I do that, I was handed a second sign-in sheet for uh, the comment period. And uh, Kelly, if you'll hang with us through the, this item. That's for the public comments for the items coming up. Oh, is it for this item? Okay. No, it's for the budget. For the budget, okay. okay. Uh, we'll come back to you. So uh, at this point, I'm gonna open, uh, the, reopen the public hearing and uh, take public testimony regarding uh, this issue. Public hearing is now open. Is there anyone who wishes to address the council? Going once. <laughs> Going once? <laughs> Twice? Done. Okay. Uh, public hearing will now be closed on this issue. <clears throat> so, uh, 
Do we have a motion on this? Mr. Mayor? Mm -hmm. I'd move approval of the vacation of 225th Avenue Southeast as proposed. I would second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve this motion as proposed. Discussion? Questions? Uh, from the standpoint of the chair, I will be voting no on this issue. Uh, I do not believe that uh, uh, the city really comes out ahead on this. Uh, uh, so my position is I'll be voting against it. I'll probably be a minority, but I really don't think uh, this is something that's in our best interest. Deputy Mayor James. Uh, I'm on the flip side of this because after the compelling uh, uh, evidence put before this council that it actually is a public good based on the investment that the developer is making into the stormwater system, uh, which is not only better for the environment, but better for the cost of the city long term. I, I think financially, this is something that we ought to consider and ought to do. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, Council Member Valderrama, followed by Council Member Jared. Now, I'm still concerned about the amount of money that's been talked about and the public good has been limited, I believe it was $30,000, is that correct, that we were talking about? We save in maintenance while we give up this land. There was some offset uh, with the stormwater facility, but I am concerned about also what we're giving away as far as the size, should the traffic mitigations later be needed. Uh, so I am concerned about that and wish that those could be addressed. Mm -hmm. Councilmember Jaren. Uh, I'm going to be voting for this, and I, I think one of the reasons is the concept of narrowing our streets is uh, is a concept that I think we should be considering as a city of the whole. It reduces the impervious surface and uh, quite frankly makes it uh, a better general environment. So I'll be supporting this. Others? <clears throat> I'm trying to lose my voice, so I'll, I'll just say that I will support it as well and uh, for, for many of the reasons that uh, Council Member Jaron uh, suggested and, and Council Member uh, or Deputy Mayor James. Okay. Are we ready to call the question? Okay. All in favor of this motion say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. 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 By vo this vote is 3 2. It's an ordinance. Can't care. It's an ordinance approval. We needed four votes on this thing. Uh, okay. So the motion fails. So, uh, Mr. City Manager, uh, can we put this on the agenda for? The next meeting no. we have a full council. We voted it down, Don. I understand. It's the majority of the council's wishes. If the council would like to put it on, we certainly can do that. Uh, I would be in favor of that. And uh, I think that uh, while uh, this is a very fuzzy uh, Robert's Rules of Order thing, typically if you're on the losing side of a vote, you can't bring it up again. On the other hand, it was 3-2 in favor, so what's the losing side? Uh, we have two members who are gone today who will be here next time. Uh, obviously, uh, they can make that motion. Um, but in terms of putting it on the next agenda, I would certainly approve that. You know, at this, if we keep doing this, we're just going to keep bringing stuff up and up and up all over again until we get to a point where it passes no matter what. I'm in favor of letting the vote stand as it is. Mr. Mayor? Council Member Jarrett. I guess the point I was going to make is that I think in the interim we could get the, uh, some of the questions answered, both yours and Council Member Valderrama's uh, I don't have a question, Don. I just don't think it's a good deal. Okay. Well, we Mr. Valderrama had some questions about the, the money amounts, and uh, uh, I think uh, if we can explore that and and get those answered, uh, perhaps we can move forward with it. But I guess that can be discussed at the next meeting when we have full full attendance. Okay. So it's the council directions, I need to get a council direction. What do you want to no. do? We're going to bring it up at the next no. meeting. Oh, you get a three to two Somebody decision. Somebody needs to make a motion and vote on it so that I can do what I what council wants me to do. Well, what if it's three to two? <laughs> Well, that you can do okay. that. This is an ordinance. You need a four votes for any other motion. You don't need four votes. Move that we bring this up again at the next meeting. Second. Discussion. All in favor, say aye. 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 
I'll say nay. 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 Okay, by a vote of three, two, we'll bring it up again at the next meeting. Okay. Democracy in action, I guess. We could always call John Curley at home and see if he's well enough to <laughs> weigh in on this. <laughs> Roust him out of bed. That's my complicated <laughs> Robert. <laughs> I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Okay, we'll move on to item number 10 on the agenda, which is the ordinance. Uh, first, uh, reading adopting the 2013-2014 biennial budget. And I see uh, uh, Mr. Guanasso is all armed and ready to go with a staff report. Hmm. We do have a staff report. This is the number of meetings and we're at the end of it, so it's going to be a very brief staff report. We spent already countless hours in the meetings and going through almost page by page entire budget process. So the Joe's presentation tonight is going to be very brief. Joe. Thank you, Mr. City Manager. Mr. Mayor, members of the council. It's the first reading of the 2013-2014 biennial budget. This budget was put together under the guiding principles of prudent financial management, higher service levels for lower taxes, lean and efficient staffing levels, and the contract model approach to running the city. Uh, as you see here, it's been a long journey since April 16th. Um, that's when we first came out with our financial forecast, which we started to build a budget with. Uh, you worked through the Parks Pro Plan, the Transportation CIP Plan in May and June. And then in July, we had a discussion about the cost of living adjustment that's included in this budget. Um, beginning in September, we came back, we put together the city manager's proposed budget. On September 11th, we began the department uh, presentations to the city council. And those, each department came forward, went through in great level of detail, uh, their department budgets, different uh, line items as such, and changes to those. We also came back and discussed the city council's list of projects. And October 15th, we came back to the council and we talked about additions or deletions to the city manager's proposed budget, which we built into tonight's the 13-14 preliminary budget. Um, tonight, we'll be having the first public hearing on the budget, as well as the first public hearing on the property tax levy, storm fees, uh, real estate excise tax ordinance, and a 2013 salary schedule. The 13-14 biennial budget, this is the, the balanced budget equation. This is what actually gets referenced in the ordinance. Um, the biennial budget of $153,673,689, uh, referred to in Table A. That includes your expenditures, includes everything as far as the inner funds and transfers, as well as ending fund balance. We started this budget process with the beginning fund balance, and this, this slide here may look familiar to most of you. Uh, I tried to get that out to you today. Uh, there were questions on the difference between in, um, in the budget document, the difference in the 2011-12 ending fund balance and 2013-14 beginning fund balance. We actually project to complete the 11 and 12 biennium $25 million better than we had anticipated when we budgeted in 11 and 12. Um, in 2011, and, and these these changes to between budget and actual, these have occurred over time. So when I come up here and my first lead punch is always, I'm here with a good news story. This is what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, over collection of revenues, under expenditure of um, contingencies, as well as department savings, we ended 2011 $9 million better than we thought we would. And in 2012, we're projecting to end the year um, and the biennium, approximately 25 million to the better. Now that includes in that expenditure number, the 11.7 difference in 2012. Part of that is a $6.1 million we had budgeted for a community center, not going to be spent in 2012, as well as the $3 million we currently have on our budget for the town center infrastructure, not going to be spent in 2012. That's going to be carried over. On our operating budget highlights, uh, 2013 and 14 assumes no property tax increase. This will be the fourth year in a row where Sammamish has not taken the additional 1%. Um, other impacts to the revenues are sa sales tax and development revenue continue to be strong. We saw that in 11 and 12 biennium. We're foreseeing that in 13 and 14 in our projections as well. Also, on permitting fees as well as parks facility rentals, as we discussed, there's a, we're proposing a 1.5% increase to cover the cost of um, 
folks being able to come in and get a permit with a credit card or reserving parks with a credit card, or parks facilities, I'm sorry. And it also includes 35% of the total recollections, which I'll be talking about later um, during the, the public hearing for the read ordinance, um, going from CIP to the street fund. <clears throat> Our expenditure budget for 13 and 14 without transfers is $68.2 million. Lion's share of that is a general fund at $51.7 million. Recall that 11 and 12 expenditure budget was $96.4 million without transfers. Uh, this illustrates, I gave you the 11 and 12 budget as well as the 13 and 14 budget for the general fund departments. And it illustrates that the, the split between departments that, as a percentage of the general funds remain relatively constant between the two bienniums, uh, with the exception of the facilities fund, which as we described, we're consolidating all the costs of maintaining all the facilities into the facilities department. So you see that one grow as far as its proportion of the general fund and as well as the annual change. Overall, the general fund increased $4 million over the biennium, or approximately 4% per year increase. Some of the highlights in the 2013 and 14 expenditure side include $536,000 for the comprehensive plan rewrite. That includes a, a two-year limited term uh, employee. The economic development um, in the operating side, that the $330,000 goes towards the economic development plan, as well as $100,000 per year for the unified zone development plans. Also included on the capital side is $3.5 million uh, capital reserve for the town center development, for which the council adopted uh, spending criteria on October 9th. Um, the facility upgrades or technology upgrades include council chambers and conference room upgrades that we've discussed. Uh, ability for mobile workforce, audio, video systems improvements, as well as uh, HVAC equipment in the server room. The facilities maintenance consolidation, again, at $1.4 million over the two years. That's primarily due to the us accounting for all the costs within one department. And then the MPDS requirements, approximately $1.3 million over the biennium. That's going to be covered in more detail when we talk about the storm fund later this evening. <coughs> as far as personnel costs, um, our full-time equivalent positions increased from 67 and a half to 72 in 2013, no change in 14, as well as we've added three each in nine-month seasonal positions and four-month seasonal positions. Um, limited term employees, we have one that sunsets in 2012 and a two-year position beginning in 2013 uh, related to the comprehensive plan rewrite. And we do not plan to add or reduce any council members over the next biennium. <laughs> um, salary and benefits make up <laughs> approximately 28% of the total operating budget. Some of the highlights, we have uh, 2013 assumes a 1.25% cost of living adjustment. Um, it also includes 50 cent per hour increase to the maximum hourly rate for our seasonal maintenance workers. So the current rate is $16 an hour. 2013, that will become 1650. 2014, that will become $17 an hour. On the benefit side, we have $25,000 per year for reinstatement of the tuition reimbursement program as well as we began the budget with a, um, the employees all paying 10% of the payment for family medical benefit premiums, which was reduced by the 2% wellness savings per council's direction um, on October 15th. I'm not going to go through this whole slide again, but uh, just to be aware, 2014 budget assumes an increase in part-time benefits of $340,000 regarded uh, related to the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act, and we will keep council posted as anything transpires over the next year. 2013 and 14 CAP plans did not change much th throughout the, um, uh, the budget process. Uh, we're starting between parks, transportation, and general CIP, not include stormwater CIP. We're starting with about uh, $30 million in the bank going to bring in $13.6 million in revenues, primarily from REIT and impact, real estate excise tax and impact fees. And we plan to spend $13.5 million over the biennium. 
stormwater management fund. This is one we'll go into greater detail on in one of the, the later um, discussions this evening. But it does include the 18% increase in surface water management fees um, in 2013 and 15% in 2014, as well as an increase in the system development charge to 1,491. Um, again, the NPDES requirements included in the budget totaled $1.3 million over the biennium. So our 2013 and 14 ending fund balance, we are looking at ending the 13-14 biennium with 45.8 million, 45 million um, in reserves in ending fund balance. Of that, $8.8 million of that is designated or restricted. That includes our uh, strategic reserve in the general fund, as well as um, uh, field turf replacement in the parks CIP, and then restricted funding for storm um, and operating in CIP. So with that, at the end of this biennium, um, we still consider ourselves to be in very strong and enviable position of a lot of the cities, most of the cities across the state and the nation. Um, we showed you these slides before. The um, total ending fund balance of $45.8 million, $25 million of that were to go to support the community center. We'd have an anticipated balance of $20.8 million, which is 24% of the 13 and 14 biennial budget. Um, next, I can say this now, next month we'll be paying off our 2002 LTGO bonds. That will leave us, uh, the only debt outstanding will be the Public Works Trust Fund loan. Long-term general obligation, LTGO. Yes, sorry. Thank you. Um, and that'll leave us with the Public Works Trust Fund loan, uh, half a percent interest rate. Our um, available debt capacity is going to be $414 million. Another indicator of our long-term health, the, the quote-unquote crossover point that we talk about is out until 2018. <clears throat> it's over two biennial budgets down the road for us. We will address that as we get closer to it. And we remain our AAA bond rating, one of only six cities in the state of Washington. So at the end of tonight, as I mentioned before, it's the first reading and public hearing for the 13 and 14 budget. Property tax levy, storm fees, real estate excise tax ordinance, as well as adoption of the 2013 salary schedule resolution. Uh, for this portion of the 13 14 biennial budget, this is the first reading and public hearing. No council action is required at this time. Thank you, Mr. Granasso. Are there questions for staff? I, I will, but uh, are there questions for staff? at this point on the presentation? No. no. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> at this point, I am going to open the uh, discussion to public testimony. Uh, are there members of the audience who wish to uh, speak about the budget? And I do have one sign up. Uh, Ms. Kelly Ryder, would you please come to the podium, give us your full name, address, and uh, who you're representing. Hi there, good evening. My name is Kelly Ryder. I'm Policy Director for the Housing Development Consortium of King County, or HDC. I live in Seattle. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to comment on your proposed budget for the 2013-14 biennium. On behalf of HDC and our more than 100 organizational members, I want to thank you for your past participation in ARCH and for your support of ARCH and urge you to continue your uh, commitment to ARCH by prioritizing funding for ARCH in your final budget. HDC is a nonprofit membership organization which represents private businesses, nonprofit organizations, and government agencies who are all working to develop affordable housing across King County and who are dedicated to the vision that all people should have a safe, healthy, and affordable home. We applaud the City of Sammamish for your work toward achieving this vision through your past Arch Housing Trust Fund contributions and for reaffirming your con commitment to Arch through your proposed Arch allocation for the 2013-14 biennium. We sympathize with the difficult budget decisions you've had to make over the past several years and the uncertainties you continue to face regarding the state budget and ongoing economic vol volatility, though it sounds like from the presentation tonight things may be getting a little bit better. 
Regardless, the impact of reduced revenues has clearly taken a toll on your contributions to the Arch Housing Trust Fund, as seen in the dramatic reduction of this allocation from 200,000 in the 09-2010 biennium, similar to the uh, contributions proposed by your neighboring city of Issaquah, to only $20,000 in the 11-12 biennium and also proposed for the 13-14 biennium. Nevertheless, we wanna remind you of the importance of your continued commitment to participating in Arch and to funding the Arch Housing Trust Fund. Arch helps communities on the east side provide more affordable housing choices for low-income families by assisting cities in developing creative, targeted land use tools and by funding the construction of affordable homes through the Arch Housing Trust Fund. Since inception, Arch funding has contributed to the creation of more than 2,500 affordable homes across the east side, leveraging $9 of external funding from federal, state, county, and other sources for every $1 of Arch funding. Unfortunately, this work continues to fall short of meeting the needs of all Eastside families. Currently, more than one-third of Eastside residents are paying more than 30% of their income for housing costs, the federal standard for affordability, and 15% are paying more than half of their income for housing. Working families on the east side need to be able to afford their housing and still have enough money left over for basic expenses like gas, groceries, and child care. Please support affordable housing opportunities in Sammamish by continuing your participation in ARCH and by prioritizing funding for ARCH in your 2013-14 budget. Thank you. Thank you. Are there others who wish to address the uh, council on this issue? Uh, seeing none, I am going to continue the hearing until we bring the issue up again, which will be at our November 19th meeting for the second uh, reading. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, city manager. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Since the two speakers made a comment <coughs> about mm -hmm. the arch, so I, I figure that I, I'll spend a minute to just kind of summarize it. Mm -hmm. 2013 and 2014 budget funds the city's participation in arch. In addition to that, that city had made a decision um, um, to contribute more to the affordable housing by donating the old public workshop facility at the corner of South East 20th and 228th Avenue. That process is also coming to the conclusion. So um, council sees that as a priority and it reflected in the previous budgets and it will continue to do so in the 13 <coughs> and 14 budget. Thank you, Mr. City Manager. Further comments from council? Okay. Then we will move on to our next agenda item, which was uh, item number 11. First reading relating to the levying of re regular property taxes and establishing the amount to be levied in 2013 on the assessed valuation of the property within the city. And Mr. City Manager, I assume. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Uh, again, this is the topic. We spent um, extensive times pre time previously, <coughs> and we got a council direction as to what you want us to do with the property tax. Our finance director is going to make a, a brief presentation on this. Joe? Thank you, and this one will be brief. Um, for the benefit of our audience, property tax is calculated by taking the, the amount of revenue the city will collect, dividing it by 1,000 per assessed value within the city. And that's how we derive our property tax levy rate. Our property tax levy rate in 2013 is estimated to be $2.59 per $1,000 of assessed value. Uh, again, Sammamish has foregone the 1% allowable levy increase for the four years since 2000 for the last four years, including 2013. And the numbers that we have here are preliminary. The final assessed valuation numbers are due to us from the King County Assessor's Office at the end of this month. So um, what we have in the ordin ordinance there is subject to change, not by a great deal of amount, but um, we'll get those numbers from King County and update our documents. Um, assessed valuation uh, within the city remains at $8.4 billion. Um, that actually includes $111 million of new assessed value from new construction last year. Um, so the, the baseline assessed valuation actually went down slightly in 2013. Um, again, the levy rate history uh, without taking the 1% property tax increase over the last four years, $2.59 per um, $1,000 assessed valuation. And our revenue history, as you can see, 2013, our budget assumes $21.8 million um, from property tax revenue. Again, tonight is first reading of the ordinance in public hearing, and no council action is required at this time. Questions for staff? Councilmember Jern. 
Uh, Joel, could you explain how you get $186,000 as 1%? Uh, I guess I'm confused on that. Yeah. That is the calculation that we get from King County. It's not taken off, it's not taken the prior year's, um, it doesn't take the prior year's levy amount and take a straight 1% from that. There's a intricate calculation, if Chris would like to hand that to me. Great question. It's just a couple minute explanation though, isn't it? Yeah. We got the <laughs> I was of the impression it's more like two. Uh, I think the Chris wrote a PhD dissertation on this thing, so we'll <laughs> do a very short to two hour version of this thing right now. <laughs> so Dr. Chris, Chris, you're on. <laughs> I'm Chris Giannini, the Deputy Finance Director. I'll try to make this short. It took me about an hour and a half to figure out how the county does this, but actually what they do is they take 1% of the prior year's amount that we could have levied if we'd always taken the 1%. Mm -hmm. And they reduce that by what they call the re-levy amount. So in prior years, people have had property taxes refunded because they maybe paid twice or made a mistake or they protested, so they got a refund. Ah. Well, we don't get to collect that again. Okay. So they deduct it from the 1%. So the county actually tells us what the number is. So for last year, the amount we could have levied was $21,952,000 and the 1% was $219,000. But the re-levy from the prior year was $33,000, so they de deduct that from the $219,000 and get the one eighty six. Thank you. Thank so. you. <laughs> okay, you're welcome. <coughs> I'm happy. Further questions? Okay, at this point I'll open a public hearing on this issue. Public hearing on the 2013 property tax levy ordinance is open. Is there anyone in the audience who wishes to speak on this issue? Not seeing anyone, I am going to continue public hearing until our uh, November 19th meeting, uh, at which point we will vote on this budget. Thank you. Our next agenda item, number 12, is ordinance, first reading, amending Sammamish Municipal Code, section 13.15.010, uh, paragraph one, authorizing collection of surface water system development charges, providing for severability, and establishing an effective date. Mr. City Manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we do have a report on this. Our public works director is going to provide a report again this is the topic we spend extensive time <coughs> in our uh, preliminary budget discussions. So I don't want the audience to think that the council is not asking questions or not spending time on these topics. We have spent multiple study sessions, uh, incredible amount of times uh, on this topic. So, Laura, could you please give us a brief staff report? Uh, thank you. Uh, good evening. The uh, as. City Manager Ben, uh, as you pointed out, that we are talking about the surface water management fees this evening. Uh, we have discussed this at a couple council meetings previously. Uh, just a quick reminder of how the the revenue makeup for our surface water management uh, fund. It's comprised of a monthly surface water management fee that goes into the operating fund. A portion of that fee is transferred into the capital fund and we also collect a system development charge from new development uh, that also goes into the surface water management fund. The surface water management fee, we discuss at length the increases associated with the National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System requirements, and this is the state-issued permit to uh, implement the Federal Clean Water Act. Uh, we also have reviewed in detail the history of the fees since incorporation with council uh, highlighting that the last <coughs> increase to the surface water management fee was in 2005 and the last increase to the system development charge was in 2001. Uh, we did share this graph previously to show that uh, we've held the rates constant and the red line shows what would have happened to the rates had inflation been added each year. Uh, this 
table, sh which again we've shared previously, shows our recommendations for uh, the rates as we go into the future. We are recommending the 2013 rates be increased 18 percent from 130 to 177 for a single family resident. And then again increase another 15% in 2014 to a total of $203.55. The total increase from 2012 to 2014 is $53. Uh, this graph shows where we are today compared to our neighbor, neighboring jurisdictions as well as where we will be if the 2013 rates are adopted by the city council. Uh, again, this shows what the our neighbor jurisdictions our uh, rates are for 2012. It does not take into account any adjustments they're making for 13 or 14. And we do in fact know some of them are making adjustments for 13 or 14. We right? do. We just don't know what those what the results are at this point. Um, <laughs> So this, uh, this slide, I just wanted to share a little bit about what the mechanics are. The surface water management fees are actually included in the, the uh, fee resolution that the city council adopts annually. So this table is actually in, will be provided to the city council on no, uh, November 19th for consideration. And this is where the surface water management fees will be. Again, it shows the residential 150 per parcel. We're proposing to increase that to 177. It also shows the differences. We're using the same 18% for the commercial sites as well. Um, I'm showing this to you now. This is not part of the ordinance that's before the City Council tonight. However, the, the surface water management fees and system development charge are, are a very um, integral to each other, as we showed in the first slide. A, an adjustment or a change in the rate on one will affect the other. Um, so again, this will come before the City Council as a resolution on November 19th. Brings us to the system development charge, is what the ordinance and, your, and the council packet uh, addresses this evening. It's also uh, what we are asking the council to open a public hearing and consider tonight. Uh, again, we went over the mechanics of how the system development charge is collected. It is part of the uh, a new development. It's part of their their costs associated with it. The the city council has since incorporation had the mantra of development pays for development. The the uh, new development growth should not the cost of that should not be burdened on the uh, existing rate payers or existing taxpayers. And so the idea is we take the existing stormwater capital assets <coughs> and we take the, that have been paid for by the city as well as future projects that have been identified and calculate a equivalent residential dwelling unit, the number of those as well as the cost. You divide them, the, the cost by the total num equivalent dwelling, residential dwelling units, and you come up with a equivalent dwelling unit cost of 1,491. I wanted to show that today and, and since 2001 it has been $570 for that equivalent residential dwelling unit cost and we're proposing to go to 1,491 which brings us to the top of uh, our neighbors but again as we mentioned this represents growth paying for growth and it also represents the, their fees as of 2012 and we do not have their fees uh, for 2013 at this time. Do you have reason to believe they're increasing as well? We know, uh, we know specifically that Bellevue is, is looking at all of their fees and, and is proposing increases. I'm not sure about um, some of the other ones at this point. Thank you. Um, just a uh, reminder of what our assumptions were as we worked on these calculations. We assumed 200 new single family units per year for growth. We assumed keeping 45 days of cash reserve for our operating. Um, <coughs> The operating expen expenditures are as we presented in the, the draft budget, the proposed budget that was also before you uh, in Joe's earlier presentation. Um, we The capital is based on the draft CIP that we reviewed with the City Council earlier uh, this fall. The costs associated with the 
with the um, system development charge do not include the Tamarack or Southeast 24th Street or Town Center projects. <coughs> um, and we talked at that time that any additional projects that would be considered or added uh, would it change both the fees and the system development charges. The ordinance that's before you is the, for the system development charge, and this is actually uh, in uh, section 13.15.010 of the Sammamish Municipal Code. Uh, current column I'm showing is the current rates in the code and our proposed rates. Uh, currently, per equivalent dwelling unit, you, you are the development is required to pay for the uh, cost per dwelling unit, but in the additional, you can see there's additional costs for larger size facilities, and this is uh, impl this is what we use this for commercial sites on on um, helping to determine what their rates are that they pay. Um, but we are not proposing any change to the structure of how the fees are collected or calculated; just the dollar amount. So actions for tonight, we're requesting that the City Council open the public hearing for the first reading, again to modify Sammamish Municipal Code section 13.15.010, listen to public testimony and either close or continue the public hearing, and we have the second reading actually scheduled for November 13th next week. And so if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer those. Okay, questions for staff? Okay, not seeing any questions. I'll move to public, com uh, public uh, comment on the hearing. Testimony. Uh, <clears throat> we are now open for uh, public testimony on uh, this uh, ordinance. So is there anyone in the audience who wishes to, to testify? Is there anyone in the audience who wishes to testify on this ordinance? Not seeing uh, anyone coming forth, I am going to uh, continue public uh, testimony to no November 13th. 13th. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> uh, we have no more unfinished business. Uh, we're now into new business, which is item number 13 on the agenda which is an ordinance regarding amending sections uh, 3.10.010 paragraph 3 and 3.10.020 uh, paragraph 3 uh, the City of Sammamish Municipal Code to allow the first and second quarter percents of the real estate excise tax revenues to be used with some conditions for operations and maintenance of existing capital projects. Uh, Mr. City Manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this is a topic that the council uh, legislators give us an opportunity to take some of the real estate excise tax capital revenues to put on the operating to maintain the facilities that we built. I think the, the, uh, the message that the legislators had heard was that um, cities were struggling to maintain the facilities, um, uh, so they wanted to have some flexibility in the use of the real estate excise tax revenues. And council direction for us was, uh, even though we don't have that necessarily significant problem, but it is good to take the portion of the real estate excise tax to put on the operating revenues. Mm -hmm. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to our esteemed finance director to give you the report on this then. Joe? <coughs> Thank you, Mr. City Manager. I will go through this rather quickly. It's more of a housekeeping item than anything, and Chris will be happy to answer any questions you have at the end. <laughs> um, <laughs> House Bill 1953 as Ben was saying, allows municipalities to use real estate excise tax number one and number two um, for maintenance of existing facilities. Um, in the past, this was just restricted to um, purchasing and building of new facilities. The sun sets at the end of 2016, and it must be accounted for separately, so it does cause a, an interfund transfer within our budget. In summary, 35% um, of our 2012 estimated REIT is going to be approximately $770,000. This is just a quick graphic that shows um, 
in over the biennium in the transportation CIP fund and the park CIP fund, we're going to collect approximately $2.2 million of REIT. Um, it has to be accounted for in the capital fund, so we couldn't put it directly into the street fund. That will result in a $1.5 million transfer between those two CIP funds to the street fund. Um, and as well, the park CIP and transportation CIP through our in-fund transfers are made whole. So in total, we're not getting any more real estate excise tax. We're just pushing a million and a half of it towards the street fund. Um, tonight is the first reading. There is no council action required. It does not require a public hearing. And the second reading is due for November 13th. Okay. Got it. Questions? Council Member Jared? Uh, Joe, do you know if other cities are using this uh, 35%? You know, we asked around at the beginning of the budget process. Um, from what I understand, Kirkland was definitely in. Um, when we first talked to folks about it, I think we we're, I, I want to say the number was 80% weren't. There were two out of about 10 or 11 that came back and said they were. And I think more people had gone to that as we moved along. I can, I can recheck and, and come back to second reading with that information if you'd like. Uh, uh, Puget Sound City Manager's meeting is tomorrow morning, so that's one of the things that I'm going to ask around the table to, to see. Who's taking what? Good. Thank you. I'll, I'll let you know. Be second. interesting to know. Yeah. Yeah. Further questions? Yeah. Joe, am I correct in that um, if we didn't do this, this would be roughly 1.35 million or whatever the number was that would uh, not trickle through to the general fund, correct? Correct. This would stay in the transportation CIP fund mm -hmm. and the park CIP fund. So effectively, this is taking the money that ordinarily would come out of the general fund to fund this and put it back in. Correct. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, I'm going to open public hearing on this uh, no ordinance. Hearing, no. Mm -hmm. There's no public, no public hearing required for this ordinance, Mr. Mayor, so it's the first reading. Sorry? If there's no question, we'll bring it back for the second All right. reading. Fine mistake, pardon me. So we'll move on to the next item of new business, uh, which is adopting the City of Samaritan Employees Salary Schedule. For fiscal year 2013, Mr. City Manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of the council. This is uh, one last piece of the budget uh, ordinances and resolution. This is a resolution. Uh, we have to do that as part of our overall biennial budget approval process. Again, we spoke and discussed uh, many topics in our budget meetings, and this was one of them. So we're just going to formalize the your guidance and directions uh, tonight. With that, I'm going to turn it over to our finance director to give you a brief report. Joe? Thank you, Mr. City Manager. So the 2013 salary schedule, um, where I don't expect you to look at the slide and be able to read this, I will tell you there's no structural changes to it. We didn't add any position titles or new position uh, ranges. What it does is it applies a cost of living adjustment to the 2012 ranges that are currently in our salary schedule. It also um, includes the seasonal hourly rate change I had mentioned earlier from the maximum top of the range at $16 an hour to $16.50 per hour. Uh, recall that in July we had a discussion and council directed us for the 2013 cost of living adjustment calculation to base it on the four-year average, to mitigate the annual changes in the CPIU and to integrate it with our two-year budget. Uh, that resolution passed on July 16th and that's how we came up with the 1.25% 2013 cost of living adjustment. Um, this is a resolution. Uh, Tonight's action, we recommend um, council approval of the, the salary schedule resolution for 2013. Questions for staff? <laughs> okay, not seeing any questions. Um, may we have a motion? I'd like to make a motion. Well, I have a discussion. We have to make a motion. We have to make the motion first. Oh, okay. I'd like to make a motion to pass the uh, salary schedule as presented. Second. It's been moved and seconded to pass the uh, salary schedule as presented. Uh, discussion? Councilmember Valderrama? Yeah, I, I'm, as I mentioned previous when this was being discussed, I'm very supportive of the city and trying to smooth out the increases of the cost of living. 
adjustments. I am, however, concerned that in times of fiscal distress or systematic shock to the systems, whether it's a 9-11 or a fiscal cliff that we're coming, uh, that could very well be coming towards us here at the end of the year, we could see another economic problem and our staff continue to increase while the citizens in the city would have a problem. I again would recommend that we adhere and adopt the same policy that Kathy Lambert had imposed for King County, that this continue in place, but at in times of fiscal distress, that the city uh, call off any increase. Is that an amendment to the motion? I would ask that it be uh, amended. I don't think you can make that amendment. You're we already decided that. that. That was discussed and decided, so yeah. if you wanted to make a completely new motion after this thing is decided, please do so. Mm -hmm. I don't think you can do that either. No, I don't, I don't know that this would be part of this particular resolution. <coughs> I don't think it would be part of this resolution either. Um, you know, if we had a 9-11 or if we had uh, an economic abyss, God help us, uh, happen, uh, I think we could probably come back to the city staff and open and reopen the discussion. My experience in the, uh, in the uh, private sector has been that when you do have something, uh, for instance, in the Arab oil embargo, which we had a couple of decades ago, uh, which knocked the economic pins up from underneath uh, a number of businesses, uh, that uh, things got rediscussed. So, uh, Rivera, while I share your concerns, I think, uh, you know, if there is really truly a, uh, a exogenous shock, to use, uh, use the term, uh, then perhaps uh, we could reopen it. I see Mr. City Manager raising his hand. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I, I totally agree with you, especially, and, and, and I think that's a legitimate concern. And if, if there's a such thing to happen, your employees had already demonstrated to you that. Mm -hmm. They took the no cost increases and they even took the reductions in the COLA. That was unheard of for any public employees. And that wasn't even as due to crises. So if there is a crisis, you got a very reasonable group of employees that they would sit down and talk with us. The, the other thing I would say, Mr. City Manager, is if we did have something like this happen, you don't find out the effect of the COLA for a year. And if we did have a uh, economic tidal wave coming, I don't think we'd wait for the year. Uh, further discussion? Okay. Uh, are we ready to vote? All in favor of this motion say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Nay. By our vote of four to one, the motion carries. Thank you, Council. Okay, that brings us to the end of the formal agenda. Um, I'm going to suggest that we forego council and committee reports this evening, unless someone has something they absolutely have to say. <laughs> for time reasons. The goal is to get out before 8. I think you're going to do it. Tom. I might just try it. Uh, Councilmember Alderman? Just one point that I was at the EFER uh, personnel committee where we had discussed the fire chief's optics evaluation. I had passed that form to all of you. Mm -hmm. I had no replies. Should one of you want to hear how that discussion went with the other cities, I would be more than glad to sit with you and discuss that. Thank you. I would. Uh, Council Member Jern. Uh, you have at your places a, a letter that uh, the city sent requesting a, or asking that one of the next ferries be named the Sammamish. Uh, I have drafted a letter with the help of Tim Larson. Uh, in support of that, I've been assigned the task of going down to Tacoma next week and uh, testifying at the Transportation Commission. Um, if you have any input or uh, suggested changes to it. What I suggested is that we try to get the other three cities around Lake Sammamish to join in support and also perhaps the two major employers being Microsoft and Costco. So um, that's what I'm trying to do and if you have any objections let me know. Okay. 
Irrespective of whether or not you get the support from the two firms and our two neighbors, go for, go for it. it. Yes, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, any further comments? Okay, at this point, uh, we do not have an executive session tonight. Do we have a city manager report? I have a, about uh, 45 minutes a short. <laughs> okay, well, we'll catch up in the rear. <laughs> Thank you. There is no city manager's report oh, tonight. Oh, Mr. Mayor, one yeah. other point. Uh, at the PIC meeting coming up, there are some decisions that, oh, yes. that have to be made, and uh, we should give our representative authority to vote on those. That's actually at the annual meeting, which I believe is the 15th. Okay, so 14th. we'll have one more meeting before we'll that? One more meeting. Yeah, well, we can do this now if you no, want to. let's do it the no. next meeting. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, do it at 8.30. Okay, good. Okay, uh, motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. Yeah, it's been moved and second to adjourn. All, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, don't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to lead the council. We are adjourned. <laughs>